welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming kind of a fun video. I don't want this to be negative, but I thought it would be so fun because let's be real, many of you have referred to me as the queen of palettes, which I really appreciate. Like if it was a contest, I'd be happy to win. I thought it would be fun since I buy so many eyeshadow palettes if I kind of talk to you guys about palettes that are launching or have launched that I'm like, mm, I have no interest in those. And so I've actually been making a list it's right here in my YouTube notebook. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. So the first palette that I have no interest in purchasing is the Natasha Denona Safari palette. Now this one, I was kind of interested, anytime I hear like Safari, I get excited because my husband's from Africa <laughs> and anything that is related to Africa kind of piques my interest. And of course, Safari is a big deal in Africa. And I was just really excited to see some of the shades she was coming out with. I was hoping, you know, there was a good like a khaki green in there, hoping for like a mustard, like a lion shade, you know, maybe some colors like peacock shades. I was really, really interested. And then when she did the reveal, I was like, oh my gosh, that is the Vizier Dark Mats palette, <laughs> like regurgitated. And I have the Vizier Dark Mats palette. And I must say, it's actually my least used Vizier palette. That was the one I bought first because I thought it was so different. That would be like a fun addition to my eyeshadow palette collection, but I actually don't use it at all really. I definitely didn't need another one and I definitely didn't need to spend $125 on it. And then I also watched Mel Thompson's review on the Safari palette and I was like, whew, dodged a fucking bullet there. I mean, I was never gonna buy it, but I was just, her review, if you guys are on, like thinking about if you should buy the Natasha Denona Safari palette, I will link Mel's video up or down. Watch it, cause I'm pretty sure she will convince you that you don't need it. The next palette that I have no interest in is the Charlotte Tilbury Stars In Your Eyes palette. Now this is her holiday palette. I think it went out in PR. I've seen a lot of Caucasian beauty gurus get the palette. I haven't seen anyone that's my skin tone or darker that's received the palette. I've tried Charlotte Tilbury's Instant Look In A Palette 1 that came out. It was a Nordstrom exclusive or something and I bought it. Hated it, returned it. You know, no interest in trying her eyeshadows after that. And this one, it kind of reminds me of the Urban Decay Rose Gold Naked Palette, the third one, Naked 3. And I didn't like that on me. I actually received it as a gift, I think, one Christmas. And I actually ended up returning it because I just didn't think the shades worked for me. And so I feel like it's a little bit kind of like too late with that palette. And it's $75. Auntie Charlotte is going to need to send me that in the mail because I'm not buying it. The next palette, oh my gosh, this one, this one they could have convinced me to buy because the packaging was gorgeous. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, I'm talking about the Becca Volcano Goddess palette. Oh my God. When they sneak peeked the cover or the packaging, I was like, oh my God, please, please be a face palette because Becca does amazing face palettes. I have the one from Holiday last year, love it. And so I was hoping it was a face palette and it actually ended up being a very boring, eyeshadow palette and it reminded me a lot of that other one that Morphe came out with simultaneously around the same time if I remember in editing I'll throw up pictures so you guys can see how similar they were um, but this palette was so disappointing and I honestly have no interest in trying Becca's eyeshadow formula I've tried a lot of things from them I've tried their foundations I've tried their primers blushes bronzers highlighters of course which they're known for but their eyeshadow palettes I'm a little sketched out by, especially after that whole Jaclyn Hill debacle that happened a couple of years ago. No interest, really disappointed, really wish they had done something better with that epic packaging, but they didn't. So I think that was a missed opportunity on Becca's part. If you have the palette and you like it, I'm so curious to know, so definitely leave me a comment down below. Okay, so Bobbi Brown has a few different palettes that are on Sephora's website. I'll try and remember to put pictures up so you guys know what I'm talking about. The one I saw was called the Ultraviolet and it had like an interesting purple shade in it, but honestly, I've never tried Bobbi Brown's eyeshadows. I know back in the day, a lot of people were obsessed with the shade Camel, which was like a single eyeshadow. I was, I don't buy single eyeshadows. I did buy a few Urban Decay eyeshadows, but I haven't done that in a long time. And I have no intention of going out and buying Bobbi Brown's eyeshadow because I feel like 
she's one of those people or that brand is one of those brands that caters to a more subtle makeup lover where it's like wearable everyday shades and they're not overly pigmented overly glittery and I love to live the overly pigmented life so for that reason I didn't feel like picking that up and for that same reason I don't have any interest in picking up the Laura Mercier hidden gems palette Again, both of these palettes look like snooze fests. I'm sorry. I've seen the Laura Mercier palettes in quite a few YouTubers like makeup collections, but it's just not something I'm interested in, so I will be skipping on that. The next palette I have no interest in is the Sephora No Nudes palette. They also came out with another one very recently, but that had like the more fall tones, like more jewel tones and stuff like that. I did pick up two of the palettes when they originally launched last summer. So summer of 2017, I think in April they launched, or July, they launched three palettes. I bought two of the three. And I just didn't love them. They were very dusty and they were spendy palettes. They were like 65 bucks a piece. So when I saw the new shades, I was like, mm, none of these are like really calling to me. If it was something that was unique and different, I would have totally spent the $65. But there was nothing attracting me to those palettes. So I passed on them. I feel like you guys should be really impressed that there's this many palettes that I haven't bought. Because most people say like, Oh, Karen buys everything, but it's not true. I don't buy everything. I only buy the things I like. Okay, so Jouer Rose Gold. Now this collection launched a couple of months ago, maybe like a month ago, and I was kind of interested in some of the liquid lipsticks. I do have quite a few Jouer liquid lipsticks. I also have a highlighter from them, I think. That's about all the product I've tried. I'm really curious to try their foundation, but I feel like I'm scared to like try and shade match myself on the internet. It is nice though that they are sold at Sephora now, so I like that. The other thing I wanna try is one of their bronzers, but I feel like the bronzers are gonna to be too light for my skin tone. So if any of you are my skin tone and I've tried one of the Jouer bronzers, can you let me know in the comments? Cause that would be super helpful. Back to this palette. I feel like, again, it's kinda of like what I said about Laura Mercier and Bobbi Brown. It's kind of for those people that love Jouer and that is like their go-to palette. They only have like one palette a season and those are the shades they're gonna wear for that whole rest of the year. And that is not me, that's not my vibe. So I don't know, I feel like it was an okay palette. The worst palette, but I don't really know anything about Jouer's eyeshadow formula. I did get one little eyeshadow palette, like a face palette eyeshadow palette from when I went to the masterclass with Makeup by Mario like two years ago. That palette was not impressive. I actually decluttered that and sold it on my Poshmark because it was just too, basic for me and my taste and that's how I feel about this rose gold palette as well so it was a pass for me now let's talk about Viseart oh my gosh Viseart their original like professional 12 pan matte palettes are amazing I understand why they're doing all these other versions of their palettes because they're trying to appeal to the mass market I mean it's an obvious next step for a professional brand because you can't just, you know, bank on makeup artists to grow your brand, right? So I get it. So they launched the Libertine palette. I don't know, something, I was just like, mm, I don't love their shimmers. <laughs> I do like the colors in the Libertine, but it wasn't like enough to like be like, oh my God, I wanna buy that. It was easy to pass on that. And then the Grand Pro 2 is now available. I think you can buy it on Muse Beauty Pro. Reason I didn't buy it, I don't, want an all shimmer palette. I have the Urban Decay Moon Dust palette, which is, I think, one of the all shimmer palettes I own. I also own the Pat McGrath Mothership 4, which is also an all shimmer palette. And it's just so difficult to remind yourself to use an all shimmer palette. I hardly reach for them, so I don't see myself using Grand Pro Volume 2. Also, that palette is like beyond expensive. It's like $175. Totally makes sense for a makeup artist. It totally makes sense if you have the first volume. But for me, I was like, no thank you. So those two palettes I had no interest in as well. The next palette I have no interest in is the Too Faced Then and Now palette. Now, Too Faced was on my shit list for quite a long time, but they have come back and I'm pretty excited. I bought the Tutti Fruity palettes, the pineapple one and the raspberry one, and actually really enjoyed their formula. Then they did the gingerbread palette. Oh my gosh, I currently have that one in my possession. I need to test it and review it for you guys, but 
So far, I'm really enjoying their formula. Whatever they did, I'm happy for them. Good for them. Now, do they need to keep releasing all these holiday stuff that they're coming out with? That's on them. I'm not picking up any of that stuff, but I did like the Tutti Fruity eyeshadow palettes, and I did like the, or I do like the gingerbread palette so far. I've only put it on my eyes one time, so, you know, don't quote me on it. But this Then and Now palette, I don't... I don't love it. I don't love the shades. I don't love the size. It's humongous. Like, where do you store that thing? You're never going to reach for it. And yeah, all around, it's like the making of an incredibly obnoxious palette. So I get that it might have been like a collector's item. Like, if you love Too Faced, you might buy it because you love them so much. But for me, it was a hard pass, and I'm so glad I did not pick that up. Okay, the next palette I have no interest in is the Urban Decay Naked Cherry Palette. What the tits is this? Like, I <laughs> don't get it. I don't understand how they were inspired by a cherry. This literally looks like 50 shades of, like, light pinks. And I'm so bummed because I feel like this is another repeat, recycle version of the Naked 3. I feel like they should have tried and amped up the fieriness in this palette. I feel like... I really wanted it to look more like the blood sugar palette. I feel like that way more skin tones, it would have like really appealed to more skin tones. If you guys are looking for a good red eyeshadow palette, you guys, try the blood sugar palette. No matter how you feel about Jeffree Star, it's worth trying that palette because let me tell you, the reds in that palette, there's a reason it's sold out all the time, okay? And the reason is that it's a bomb palette. I've tried... The Beauty Killer palette, the Thirsty palette, and the Blood Sugar palette. There's some kind of crack cocaine in the Blood Sugar palette that makes it 10,000 times better than the two palettes I mentioned, okay? So that's all I'm going to say about that. And I feel like the Naked Cherry, too little, too late, just as always when it comes to Urban Decay. I'm just waiting for them to find something new. I don't know. Even the Elements palette, I picked it up because I was so curious about it, but as soon as I swatched it, I was like, this reminds me of all the other palettes they've done, like the John Michel Basquiat collection. I feel like half of the Elements palette is shades from that particular collab, and so I'm actually going to return that palette. I won't be reviewing it or anything, so I'm sorry in advance if you guys were looking forward to a review from me, but Urban Decay has just been, oh, the cherry palette. Oh my god. Like, mm not interested. So. And then the final palette I have no interest in is the Kevin Aquan Nude Pop Eyeshadow Palette. Now this one I actually almost wanted. Like it looked like it was going to be a cool palette. And I think my friend Jackie Lorraine on YouTube, she bought the Kevin Aquan Nude Pop Palette and she's a huge fan. I know she has like his Electric Pop Palette as well. And I've always been so curious about the brand. Every time I try stuff from them, I'm like, I don't think this is made for people with my skin tone. I do have one of his blushes, the Neo Blush in Sunrise. Oh my god, I love that blush so, so much. I bought his Contour Highlighting Volume 2 palette. Just didn't love it. I don't think the shades work for me. And this Nude Pop eyeshadow palette, I was like... This is going to be the one. I'm going to want it. And then it launched, and I saw the swatches on the website, the support website. I'm like, mm, no. Like, it was, <laughs> it just looked like it was going to end up being really ashy on my skin tone. And it's not like I'm short on palettes to play with around here. So I decided to hold on to my money and keep it to spend on something else. So that is the reason why I didn't pick up that particular palette. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on palettes I have no interest in buying. Let me know some palettes you don't have any interest in because I am always dying to talk to you guys in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will catch you in my next video, which should go live, not tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow. In case you guys don't know, I upload every other day, usually around 7 a.m. Central Time. So, you know, you can watch my videos while you get ready for work, which is what I do in the morning. I love watching YouTube as I'm getting ready. So yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.